Next thing I want to talk about when talking about limits are two special trig limits that we're going to have. I'm going to give them to you without the proof. The proof for both of them is in your book. Um, I would encourage you to look through it. It definitely is interesting to see where they, how they got this. It does involve the squeeze theorem. But because you will not be tested on the AP exam about how to prove it, I'm not going to go through it here in this video. Um, so giving them to you, then the limit as x approaches 0 for sine of x over x is going to be just 1. And the limit as x approaches 0 for 1 min minus cosine of x over x is going to be 0. You do have to memorize these. So make sure that you've got them down, highlight them, star them, box them, whatever you need to do. But you need to make sure that you um, can come up with those on your own. We're going to use these special trig functions to calculate limits by rewriting trig expressions. So very similar to when we rewrite algebraic expressions to be able to use direct substitution, we're going to do the same thing, but now with trig functions. So looking at a couple examples, and when we rewrite them, I should probably say this too, when we rewrite them, we're hoping that we will write, rewrite them to include one of these two functions. So looking at a couple examples, I see, and your unit circle will be helpful with this, when I try to plug 0 in, I get tangent of 0. Well, tangent of 0 is going to be 0 over 1, which reduces to 0. And then I plug 0 in for x. So notice that I get that indeterminate form. So that doesn't work using direct substitution. So next thing I'm going to do is try to rewrite this in another way. Well, I know that tangent is the same thing as sine over cosine. And I know that dividing by x is the same thing as multiplying by 1 over x. So I'm going to say that this is the same thing as the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over x times sine of x over cosine of x. Well, since it doesn't matter what order I multiply and divide in, if I want, I can put the x under the sine and the cosine under the 1, giving me the limit as x approaches 0 for 1 over cosine of x times sine of x over x. And now if you remember from those properties of limits, I believe that they're on page 57, it tells us that if we're multiplying two functions together, instead of taking the limit of their product, I can take the limit of each function individually and then multiply those together. So I'm going to go ahead and use direct substitution. And when I use direct substitution, or well, I'll break it actually. So I'll say the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over cosine of x times the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of x over x. So now I'm going to go ahead with the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over cosine of x, use direct substitution. I get the limit, well, I'm substituting in, and I get 1 over cosine of 0. Well, looking at my unit circle or thinking about my unit circle, I know cosine of 0 is 1 times, and then I recognize this, as a formula, <clears throat> the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of x over x, remember, is equal to 1. So I get 1 times 1, so this overall limit is 1. Looking at example 2, first thing I might try to do is use direct substitution. Well, I know cosine of 0 is 1, so I get 3 minus 3 times 1 over 6 times 0. Well, that's just going to be 0 over 0, which is indeterminate form and doesn't tell me anything, so I don't want to use that. So I'm going to try to find a way to rewrite this. Well, one of the things I notice is that um, on top I have a common factor of 3. So I'm going to go ahead and factor that out and say I have the limit as x approaches 0 of 3 times 1 minus cosine of x all over 6x. And now from here I can reduce the 3 and the 6. My 3 will go away. My 6 will become 2. And I get the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 minus cosine of x over 2x. So notice I look a lot like I want it to look, but I still have this extra constant. I have this 2 on the denominator. Well, couldn't I say that having a 2 on the denominator is the same thing as multiplying this whole thing by 1 half? So this is the same thing as saying the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 half times 1 minus cosine of x all over x. And again, if I think about those limit properties, or I reference, uh, again, I think it's page 57. I might be off on the page, but it's definitely in section 1.3. If I limit those list of properties, it tells me that if I have a scalar multiple, I can bring that out to the front. So this is the same thing as 1 half times the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 minus cosine of x all over x. 
And this I recognize as a formula. This I know is equal to zero. So this becomes one half times zero and my overall limit is just zero. Looking at the third and final example. So first thing I notice is that, I'm gonna scroll up and then I'll come back down because they don't both fit. Um, notice that with this, X can stand for anything. X can stand for the number one, X can stand for the number seven, X can stand for the expression two X, X can stand for the expression five X, or X could stand for the expression four X. So this, I notice, would mimic that special formula if I had a four on the bottom, because according to my special formula, I need the same variable on top and on bottom. Well, since I know that multiplying by one doesn't change anything, I'm gonna multiply the top of this by four and the bottom of this by four, because four over four is just one. And I now have the limit as x approaches zero of four sine four x over four x. Well, here is what I want. So I'm good there. But in order to get the four on the bottom, I gave myself this extra, um, this extra coefficient here on top. Well, just like I saw in example two, I can now pull that four out to the front and get four times the limit as x approaches zero of sine four x over four x. So I have the limit as x approaches zero, sine of some variable divided by that variable. Well, that just equals one. So this is gonna become four times one and my overall limit here is four. So just to quick recap, please make sure that you do get these formulas down. If you are getting stuck on trig functions and realizing that when you try to use direct substitution, you're getting that indeterminate form, see if you can't rewrite so that you are getting trig functions in the form or in a form that involves sine x over x and one minus cosine x over x.